CB Preview and Intro of the Sacred Council The 32 faculty members of the Magical University of Life Your team of lifestyle and awareness coaches Kandu Number 1 The guiding force of the Creator, the Life Force Make God a reality in your life Many of us are on a spiritual path, go to church, believe in God, or any name given to that eternal nameless, meditate and understand the higher principles of living, but still struggle endlessly in so many areas of our life, because we look upon that life-creating and life-sustaining force as something external, or as a concept. This guiding force of the Creator is ever-present and actually very practical to integrate in every thought, word and deed, which will make this power of life and love a reality in your life. With every step we make and with every breath we take. This force or energy which travels on the currents of eternal light and sound, and which has been given endless names like Holy Ghost, Prana and Shabbat, is the interconnection between all that is, and it is the essence of everything created, for without this, nothing could exist. It is the essence of our mortal physical body, equipped with a communication device called the mind, and referred to as the soul, the light, the child of the creator or drop of the eternal ocean of love, which is on a momentary adventure to experience the mortal world of body, mind and matter. We are driven by many external forces, addictions, attractions, conditionings, wishes, dreams, feelings and thoughts, because the mind which was once directed by the soul was taken over by the mind, which took itself for real and is now driven by our sense organs and negative passions. We find ourselves lost and lonely in a foreign land, a feeling which we try to avoid by staying busy with the things of the creation and even worship others. We worship money or power and food and possessions, fear and other emotions. But we need to reconnect and stay connected with that essence in order to experience who we really are, where we came from, how to return and to experience life as a harmonious, magical and mystical adventure. Moriah Morrow, the messenger of love. Number two, the guiding force of the universal and spiritual teacher. Master or be mastered. Find your inner master. Many of us are connected to a path to higher consciousness, follow spiritual teachings, and even follow a spiritual master. But often, without even realizing this, deny that potential within ourselves. We live under the dictates of the sense organs and the endless distractions of the mind, and we have made them our master. The guiding force of our spiritual teacher will make us aware of our master's potential within ourselves. A real spiritual master is a living example of the teachings, guiding us to self, soul and God realization, telling us how to live in the world and showing us the way home. Once being invited on a spiritual path by a spiritual teacher, an enormous power is reconnected to us, and we enter a path of which we must follow the guidelines implicitly, and go the extra mile in order to master them. We have to become on guard not to bend and inter interpret the guidelines to our convenience, or seeking worldly gain, because when we do so, we lose that pure connection. We are, put, we are put on a path to succeed and not to fail, and cannot use any excuse to not do what we need to do. So, we get the chance to struggle instead of struggling in and with the things of the world, to struggle for a lifetime on our inner path, which helps us automatically to deal better and different with all external struggles. Learning something is one thing, but knowing that something completely is mastering that something, which most likely takes a lifetime. 
We possibly learn to master many things during the course of life and even use the mind to become the ruler and master of others, which are all short-lived achievements, which we cannot take with us on our inner journey or after this physical body dies. The ultimate goal, however, is to master the sense organs and the mind, to go beyond and to find the spiritual teacher within, our self, and to become one in order to complete our quest of God-realization and return home. During the course of life, we can strive to master many things as long as we do not forget our real objective of mastering the realm of body, mind and matter. Kalimabanko, number three, the guiding force of the power of the mind. Know the tricks of your mind. Living in the mortal world, our soul took on a body to move around with and a communication device called the mind. The mind is like a computer, which can only function because it is connected to the life-creating and life-sustaining energy, and which has the capacity to assist us to learn practical things in order to live in creation, and which has the capacity to offer us endless realities and experiences the past, the moment and the future, and all what is possible in creation is stored in this computer. A soul who adventures the creation under the direction of the creator is totally free and in control of its own destiny. But when that direct connection is lost and the mind, the body and the world and the realities within are taken for real due to the falling under the direction of the sense organs, it creates a different destiny by living and remaining in bondage. The guiding force of the mind has no secrets and reveals its function, capacity and tricks without any hesitation, because it has nothing to fear, because we are all weak and fall for the endless realities of the creation. It keeps offering new realities during the course of the history of the world in which we think that we learn new things, invent new things, but there is actually nothing new, as it is all already stored in the mind computer, which it keeps us busy, keeps us busy with and distracts us from our soul's magical and mystical adventure. This game is set up by the creator, who is the creator and owner of the world of mind and matter, and he did it in order to see who rather stays busy with the endless mortal things of the world, or who is ready for soul self and God realization. The mind which knows, which now has total power over us, directed by the sense organs, loses its power once we start to feel this inner longing to return home, and the Creator will send its messengers, who reveal the secrets in order to do this. There is no discrimination on the Creator's behalf, because in the realm of eternal life, time doesn't exist. Although living in the reality of body, mind and matter, and taking it for real, there is no need to speak about a negative power, Satan, Kal, or the devil, or punishment. The mind offers endless realities, but it is us who play with them, and for that reason, we could give ourselves these names. The mind is merely the governor or governing force of creation and records all what is happening. And because there are laws within creation, the world of duality, change, cycles, time, and in which every action has a reaction, cause and effect, we keep ourselves in bondage through our thoughts, dreams, wishes and attachments and deprive ourselves from that real potential within us and that real adventure. So, you either classify yourself as a soul or identify with the mind, body and the things of the world. Dionyx, number four, the guiding force of the true disciple. Follow the teachings of your master. Many of us are on a spiritual path and have a spiritual teacher which gives us all the guidance we need. However, 
Most information is often interpreted in our own convenient ways and here and there practiced when it suits us. We are engrossed in the world and living a human existence, although it lacks mostly even that. And we try to have a spiritual experience. We need to realize that we are spiritual beings having a momentary human experience. Spirituality is not just an idea or a concept, but a way of conscious living, moment to moment, and while staying connected to that life eternal force and taking care of our worldly obligations without getting swallowed up and losing ourselves in it. The only way to please our master or teacher who is that practical example of living and walking the path of spirituality is to follow his or her instructions in every detail of daily living otherwise he or she, she and the teachings just stay in idea or concept. A teacher accepts his pupils in order for them to succeed, otherwise why would he invite them? The guiding force of the true disciple gives us, guides us to become like our teacher. We have to consider that we fail every day, but as long as we stand up again and keep our objection in mind, nothing is considered as a failure. The training which involves learning to follow we can as well train simultaneously in many other areas during our worldly adventure. We can learn to follow our superiors, mature elders, trainers, coaches, educators and other leaders who have mastered special skills and who practice healthy and con conscious living. The road in mastering things and becoming a master is the road of a student, disciple and follower and is not in the first place about reaching the end, but about acquiring the knowledge and experience. And those who really know how to lead, share their wisdom and are humble about their achievements. Janai Sumber. Number five, the guiding force of your true inner hero. Be the hero of your own life adventure. We are all fans of heroes and in general we live out our heroism by admiring them. Our heroes can be in our family, community, country, on TV or elsewhere in the world. It can be an, indiv an individual we look up to, celebrities or other famous people, or even our favorite sports team. Oftentimes it stays living our dreams out through the lives of others, who are heroes in our eyes. Many of us try to stand out and being looked up to and we do everything possible to reach that image and position and can even end up being the hero of a gang which does illegal things. Sometimes we test our limit to show off and go to the extent to harm our own body by exposing the body to extreme conditions and even go that far to put our own life in danger. Sometimes we become a hero in one or two aspects of our life through intellectual or physical achievements or we, or we become wealthy and powerful which then mostly becomes a stressful life situation of wanting more and trying to keep that image up and a big price is to be paid for all of this. The guiding force of the supreme hero is a force that guides us to go beyond this kind of hero and who represents a different kind of hero, a hero in all aspects of life. This kind of hero is someone who is at the battle with the mind, freeing him or herself from being feeling victimized, living in fear, slave of routines, destructive and unhealthy habits and complaining. This guiding force assists us to look at life as an adventure with many challenges that can be transformed into opportunities in order to become the hero of our own life adventure. And it keeps us awake and aware that our heroic acts do not only benefit ourselves, but others and the world at large. These heroic acts are in reach for everybody who wants to walk the path of this special hero. And they range from freeing oneself from seemingly very insignificant food taste addictions to the incorrect things we say, 
how we say things, to our judgmental and self-destructive thoughts, to how we care about ourselves, others and nature. Most insignificant things are in general very obvious when we are made aware of them, but many of them and the sum total of all of them make us into victims or victims of circumstance. This guiding force will assist us to conquer them when we come from the level of this kind of hero who is present in everyone and even inspires us to take on the battle with the mind and the sense organs that binds us to this world. Niyama Summer, number six, the guiding force of nature and maturity. Listen to the wisdom of the elderly and respect nature. This guiding force tunes us into the guidance of the wise elderly that are around us and connects us to the wisdom that nature has to offer since time began. Regardless if elderly individuals are wise or not, it is for us to show our respect and to lend a hand, even if they are annoying, demanding and angry. There is always something to learn from each person and each situation and using that experience to possibly do things differently. All of us, when young, looked up to the elderly people, but who are unfortunately, when getting older, stopped being that example of maturity and wisdom. In today's society, we see most people becoming old, stiff, stubborn and sick, a picture that is drastically in need of change. Where are those who mature with and in health and become vital, flexible and wise? The cause of this may be our modern lifestyle, because we pay a very high price in regards to our health, family and many other things. The guidance we received from wise and mature individuals was in the past, when we were living in the tribe, given by the council of the elderly. They were the guides and protectors of the tribe and always assisted the younger generation with their knowledge and wisdom they had acquired. They all had a track record, how they matured through life by dealing in a mature way with everything and everybody. They knew about the visible and invisible laws of the Creator, Universe and Nature, which some of them knew intuitively and others had to study about for a lifetime. We have to become clear what wise means and which is actually very simple. Knowledge can be conveyed, but wisdom not because a wise person knows how to apply that knowledge in a practical and wise manner, which requires a certain level of consciousness or insight, so to speak. Those who are real wise do not impose themselves. They do not show off what they have achieved, nor do they demand you how to do things, and they have no expectations in regards to the guidance they give. In general, they do not go about telling others how and what to do, but wait until somebody comes with questions, because they know that in general it doesn't make any sense to give someone an answer when they haven't asked the question. These rare individuals may not be close around us anymore, but they are still out there, and we may need to be open for them and their wisdom, and they will show up on your path. With modern transportation and communication, we can rediscover our personal counsel of wise once more, when at least we are seeking this. We have not only lost our immediate wise counsel, but also lost that immediate connection with nature, where in the past individuals learned from being part of it. And when we cannot make this connection, we definitely need the guidance of those who still have that knowledge and wisdom. They are those who could assist us by revealing the secrets to live in harmony with nature and introducing us to the health and healing that nature has to offer. There are many books available on many subjects, ranging from food and plants and herbs and colors, fresh air and oxygen, vital water, natural heating systems, natural building materials and self-healing assisting therapies. But we may have to find a living teacher in order to understand the endless secrets of nature 
and to integrate in this information in a practical way in our life. Jim Jara, number seven, the guiding force of fantasy and magic. Live your life as a magical adventure. We all love the realm of fantasy and magic by revealing, by reading or listening to magical children's stories, going to the movies, visiting a fair, magical play parks, looking at parades or walking in the streets during the celebration times, when everything depicts magic. This magical guiding force is for that reason not just relevant during our childhood years, but it means to be there, it is meant to be there for our entire life. We call the life of a child a make-believe world in which children innocently play but we forget that our entire life is a make-believe world because it is merely a projection of the mind. There is nothing really real to and in this world as all is constantly changing, bound to time and created in duality. And it is in this self-created fantasy world that we find ourselves as the prince and the power, the princess and the witch, the beauty and the beast, and the good and evil. In general, we pull our children out from their magical world with our distorted picture of the life of the adult, which is so serious and stressful. We give them our distorted picture and try to prepare them in a, in a serious and stressful way and losing both the world of fantasy and magic. In the same manner, we looked at everything as something magical we can keep on looking at everything as something magical and using our imagination to make it fun and adventurous. In the same way, we play shop owner, mother and the carpenter, the nurse, or go on, we can go to our make-believe homes, make-believe business, and playing in the same way with the only difference that we have learned certain skills and social acceptable behaviors and these as well are part of role playing we are all the characters with all the fairy tales and our life is our own fairy tale and once we accept this we can keep the magic going and become magical actors and our life will be magical but don't forget that in every fairy tale we have to deal with opposite characters and challenging situations. Otherwise, it would not be an adventure. During the time when we have to acquire professional skills and behavior skills, let them be trained in a fun and adventurous way. They are, there are ways to make schooling into something fun, adventurous and magical, but that requires individuals who keep their magic and there are many school systems that offer this. Or you can learn about homeschooling and sharing your fantasy and magic with your own children. Toro the Decoder, number eight, the guiding force of translating messages. Decipher the symbolic meaning of messages. This guiding force of translating messages is there to assist in the decoding of endless messages from a symbolic point of view and guides us in one of the following areas. Messages regarding the world, our country, city and community. Messages in the form of behaviors and others that are disturbing us and which are hard to accept. The symbolic meaning of every detail of our body the strengths and challenges of body shapes and conditions, signs, symptoms, and disease. One of the most difficult things to accept is that everything we experience is a reflection from within ourselves, a perfect book, either written by God or ourselves. Once accepted, however, it becomes the most powerful tool to assist ourselves, others, and the world, for we change ourselves from being a victim of circumstances into a hero. As long as we point outward, we stay disempowered and alone. Everything around us, everything that happens, every detail of our bodies, 
everything we think about, say and do, all the struggles we have to face, all the signs, symptoms and diseases actually constitute a roadmap filled with deep hidden symbolic messages designed to help guide us towards achieving our magical and mystical life adventure. By assessing physical, mental, emotional, social, economical and environmental imbalances and looking at them from a symbolic point of view, they all become incredible messages empowering us to assist and or to transform ourselves and any situation. From the moment we understand and accept that everything is a reflection from within us, there is no reason to complain about anything anymore, because everything happens for a reason and has a purpose, although often not apparent from our level of consciousness. And when there are no obvious benefits in the realm of body, mind and matter, it is definitely for the freeing of our soul. The symbolic decoding of messages is like rediscovering an old forgotten language and once recognized an additional way of communicating and interpreting life. The tool to change ourselves lies right within ourselves. This guiding force assists us in deciphering these important messages we in general look upon as inconveniences, struggle, disease and pain, but give us a different and positive perspective and offer us an array of self-changing and self-healing avenues. Earthos, number nine, the guiding force of solids and earth energy. Experience your life as a respectful visitor. Tune into guiding force of solids and learn about the endless connections, functions, purpose, and interaction regarding the element of solids. We know the energy of solids very well, because it is the main substance of most things we can see and touch around us. On Mother Earth, it represents the gravity, the soil, the rocks and the gems, and it is the ground or soil on which we have our momentary adventure, and through its connection with the energy of the moon, the night and mountains and caves it gives us the time to sleep, relax, reflect, and hibernate. The element of solids, being the soil of Mother Earth, with its vegetation and the elements of wood, stone, and wool, and its connected colors, such as black, red, burgundy, brown, and gray, give us that sense of feeling grounded in our momentary adventure. But this world also reminds us in endless ways that we cannot hold on to anything of this world. In our body, it represents itself as our skeleton, our physical foundation, and also represents itself as our skin and the lower body opening called the rectum center, through which we eliminate. It is the substance and structure for everything in our momentary adventure, from the structure of the planets, the planet Earth, the structure of nature, our body, our home, the community, city, and of course, the structures of our daily life, the family, work, our country, and the structure of our spiritual work. However, be aware that this structure is a worldly structure, and that it is not permanent, and that we do not need to get frantic about it, for the structure is a means to an end. The structure of the body keeps us, for the time being, all connected to the physical body. The structure of the house gives us shelter. The, fa the family and fellow man a sense of being together and connected, for the time being. And our spiritual structure in the world, just the beginning of a great spiritual journey. And this structure is an individual structure that and there is no need to force others through control as already too many wars have been fought about fought between countries different races and in the name of god and religion when we do not connect with this element we lose our sense of being feeling connected and grounded and as a reaction 
we want to possess, control and hold on to anything and wonder why we feel stranded. This guiding force of the energy of solids will remind us of these facts in every aspect of our life. It will guide us to let go of things, to clean, how to recycle them voluntarily and how to become strong and feel grounded in our momentary adventure. We must not forget that the element of solids is a creation of opposites and when we fail to tune into the positive side, we can experience to feel stuck and constipated, wanting to control things and people, holding on to the things of the world and even falling down into greed. Everything goes through its own phases of experiencing itself in creation and has its own lifespan after which it recycles itself to be of use again to manifest something else. Most of us forget that we came and will go without anything. We came as visitors to experience the mortal world. We are here on an adventure to experience the things of the world and at the same time having to let go of them. It is the contribution and purpose of this element and as said before, a creation of opposites. To sum it all up, this guiding force guides us regarding matters of elimination and manifestation, manifesting and eliminating, structure, no structure, letting go, holding on, feeling grounded, feeling uprooted, being connected, feeling disconnected, feeling secure, struggling with insecurity, assisting, controlling or feeling a lack of control, selflessness, greediness, cleaning, waste accumulations, recycling, crystallization and poisoning, being fulfilled, feeling unfulfilled and filling up, being fulfilled, feeling unfulfilled and filling up, experiencing conditioned experiences, taking care of life's gifts, becoming possessive, strengths and weaknesses, life an ongoing experience, feeling stuck and stranded. Last but not least, never forget the fact that everything you see, taste, smell and touch as being something solid. It is something alive, otherwise it couldn't exist. And realize that every particle of that something solid is also something that is alive. There is no space within that solid something that is not occupied with some form of life. Wathiru, number 10, the guiding force of liquids, water, the water energy. Moderation and learn to go with the flow. Tune into the guiding force of liquids and learn about the endless connections, function, purpose and interaction regarding the elements of liquids. Without realizing it, we have a relationship with everything and everybody in creation and of course a relationship with the Creator. It is about our commitment in all these relationships that make our life playful, vital and creative. This guiding force of liquids reminds us of these facts and guiding us in our commitments which are only possible when we are flexible, adaptable, creative and playful. It shows us how we easily fall down into lust, being too serious, become stubborn, stiff, boring, rigid and lose our vitality. We know the element of liquids very well because we clean ourselves and everything around us with that substance. We drink it and our body as well and as, as our planet consists between 70 and 80 percent of that substance. In our body its main location is in the pelvic center where it is in charge of creativity, vitality, procreation and the immune system. On Mother Earth it rep represents the oceans, the rivers and lakes and it is the lubrication for all solids. Without this, elements, without this element there wouldn't be too much living on the earth. Liquids are the dance of life. It is our capacity of the artist 
in all aspects of life and assists us to experience moderation and to play and go with the flow. It is that energy of the child within us that is full of zest, imagination and knows how to play. It is that child which has saint-like qualities and its love is as pure as it can get in the creation. The energy of liquids is however just like us and anything else in creation a creation of opposites. When we fail to tune into its positive side and fall into its negative side and we become too serious, regimented and stubborn and we will experience a lack of vitality, feeling dehydrated, stiff and could even fall down in the hands of lust. Its energy keeps us busy with creating new things and busy with procreating, binding us to partner and children and busy creatively playing with the endless toys of creation. Its contribution and purpose of this element and as said before, a creation of opposites. To sum it all up, this guiding force guides us regarding matters of being creative with it all or feeling not creative and blocked, vital or depleted, flexible or inflexible, mobile or stiff, adapting or being stubborn, being artistic or boring, living with a high immune system or depleting our immune system, dancing or robotic, changeable or resisting, moderate or lustful, procreation or stagnation, going with the flow or going against the flow, playful or too serious, smooth or too rigid, committed or giving up. Last but not least, Never forget the fact that everything you see, hear, taste and touch as being something liquid is something alive, otherwise it couldn't exist. And realize that every particle of that something liquid is also something that is alive. There is no space within that liquid something that is not occupied with some form of life. Firatos, number 11 the guiding force of heat, the fire energy. Pace yourself in order to digest life. Tune into the guiding force of heat and learn about the endless connections, function, purpose and interaction regarding the element of fire and heat. Most of us are constantly on the go, forcing and pushing without taking proper time to sleep, rest and taking breaks. All ending up in us being unable to digest life connected to fear and resulting in anger. This guiding force of the energy of fire and heat is our driving force and ability to move and venture. It will remind us to be more patient and gentle and constructive and to be aware that we do not entertain fear. It will show us how to forgive ourselves and others and guides us in such a pace that we are able to digest our life. Through this element and energy of fire, everything keeps moving and is in motion. Nothing stands still in the universe. It is an ongoing world of adventures. Everything in creation has within itself this force of action, through which itself sets itself in motion and as a reaction sets everything else in motion. On Mother Earth, we know this energy as the power of the sun. So everybody can move and do during the day, but it reminds us to take breaks, for too much heat can burn us out. We know this fire energy as the stove in our body, located at the belly center, where it assists in the digestion, assimilation of, th of thoughts, experiences and foods, supplying fuel to every cell and making sure we are able to move and digest all adventures by letting us adventure in such a pace that we can digest it all. This energy and element is however just like us and anything else in creation a creation of opposites. When we fail to tune into its positive side and try to experience too much and too fast, we can easily burn ourselves up through indigestion and falling down into fear expressed through pushing 
forcing, and anger. Through this energy, we keep exploring the things of this world, busy and in constant motion physically and mentally. It is the contribution and purpose of this element, and as said before, a creation of opposites. To sum it all up, this guiding force guides us regarding matters of action or overactivity, motion and movement or excessive motion and movement, patience or impatience, gentleness or anger, adventurous or fearful and scary, taking breaks or not knowing how to stop, stimulating or too explosive, constructive or destructive, forgiving or unforgiving, digestion, digesting or indigesting, pacing yourself or burning yourself up and getting burned out, yielding or speeding, taking your time or pushing and forcing, staying calm or being defensive. Last but not least, never forget the fact that everything you see, smell, hear and touch as being heat is something alive, otherwise it couldn't exist. And realize that every particle of that heat is also something that is alive. There is no space within that heat or fire that is not occupied with some form of life. Iratu, the guiding force of gases, the air energy. Learn to embrace and love it all. Tune into the guiding force of gases and learn about the endless connections, function and purpose and interaction regarding the element of gases. Going in too many directions and wanting too much leaves us breathless and losing heart, resulting in a love-hate rela hate relationship with everything and everyone. This guiding force of energy of air and gases reminds us to constantly inhale the new and exhale the old. It is about learning to embrace ourselves, others and all our experiences and to learn how to unconditionally love it all. This guiding force also represents the endurance in our adventure and guides us in how to give and receive, to trust our book of life, to not lose heart and warning us for worldly attachments. This energy and element is the pulse or heartbeat inside everything. Everything has a kind of heartbeat or breathes through the contracting and expanding forces of universe, even a rock. It is the love and beauty within all. And we know about this element and energy on earth as the energy of air, oxygen and other gases. It represents the oxygen in the ocean the oxygen in the jungle, forests, and in the atmosphere and inside our body as the heart and chest center, and it is directly connected to our lungs, heart, and circulation. This energy gives us the endurance in our adventures, and we can express through this energy what we love and desire or not. This element and energy however, is just like us and anything else in the creation, a creation of opposites. When we fail to tune into its positive side, we can easily wear ourselves out, run out of air and oxygen, forget to breathe properly, lose heart, harden through passing our heart, getting too attached to people and things and even ending up hating them. Through this energy, we keep loving, and attaching ourselves to the things and people in the creation, battling with wanting and giving, being loved and loving, and many other connections to this energy and element. It is the contribution and purpose of this element, and, as said before, a creation of opposite. To sum it all up, this guiding force guides us regarding matters of unconditionally loving or disliking and hating, embracing it all, or rejecting things, situations and people, enduring or quitting, having the endurance or giving up, continuation or discontinuation and being stationary, inhaling or holding off, 
exhaling or holding in, receiving or rejecting, giving or withholding, letting everything circulate or getting stuck and letting things circulate, being in touch or getting out of touch, trusting or not accepting the duality in every gift and experience, experiencing the beauties of the world or getting attached, giving directions to our thoughts or not giving proper directions, detaching or attaching, sharing or taking, affectionate and caring or hardening. Last but not least, never forget the fact that everything you see, hear, smell, taste and touch as being something gassy. It is something alive, otherwise it couldn't exist. And realize that every particle of that something gassy is also something that is alive. There is no space within that gassy something or air that is not occupied with some form of life. Talcon, number 13, the guiding force of audible communication. Everything you hear and say is just an opinion. Tune into the guiding force of audible sounds and verbal communication and learn about the endless connections, function, purpose and interaction regarding audible sound and communication. Seldom in silence, afraid of the silence, unable to listen, talking without even listening to ourselves, lead to miscommunication and judgment. This unfortunately is the reality of our life. This guiding force of the energy of audible communication and the ability of speech is here to remind us of the endless audible sounds we surround ourselves with and guiding us to proper and conscious communication. It will make us aware of the difference in sharing our opinion or imposing our realities unto others by becoming an authority and playing power games, raising our voice, screaming, threatening, manipulating with words, speaking in statements, not being able to listen, with which inevitably leads to miscommunication and even judgment. Audible sound and communication is made possible through the energy substance called ether, which presents itself in three dimensions, all three connected to communication. Audible sound comes forth from anything that produces sounds, from the creations and creatures in nature, to the sound of the voice, to an engine, TV, computer, radio, and much more. This energy gives everything the opportunity to communicate verbally through sound, the communication through sound, music, and words, and think about how animals communicate. Through this energy at the throat center, we have the capacity to verbally communicate with ourselves, others, and the world, share our experiences, and express our opinion, and even judge. To keep things in perspective stay clear and open, and at times we may look, we may have to look up into the sky or over the surface of a lake or ocean to get that openness and clarity. By realizing the power of words, we can verbally share our knowledge and opinions in a positive, kind and gentle way, without pride, judging and without expectations. There are many ways to get information across, but most important is the skill, how are we getting information across? Just as we speak unclear, confusing, hyper-analytical, invasive, boring and manipulative, we can also come from empathy, compassion, clarity, love, caring, inspiration and wisdom. Through this energy we can play with all of them, and they all have a great effect in a positive or negative way. From a level of higher consciousness, we can also be humble to accept our conditionings, the conditionings of others, their perspective, and listen to them without any judgment. Through this energy, we can learn to speak different languages and using my body language, and we can become the master in a positive way, in a positive and negative way of communication. This energy is just like us and anything in creation, 
a creation of opposites. When we fail to tune in to its positive side, and depending from which level of consciousness we come, we can easily fall down into verbally miscommunicating with ourselves, others and the world, but worse, expressing our ego and judgment and using harsh and negative words. Through this energy we keep listening and speaking with the things and people in creation, judging and battling with words that create concepts and descriptions, and none of them being complete or true. It is the contribution and purpose of this element, and as said before, a creation of opposites. To sum it all up, this guiding force guides us regarding matters of verbal communication or verbal miscommunication, verbalizing or playing mute, sharing or withholding, speaking politely or screaming and threatening, accepting or judging, the ability to listen or wanting to be heard, open communication or conditioned communication, all is an opinion or my way is the only way, the acceptance of all or playing power games, having an open ear or closing our ears off, enjoying the peace and quietness or not able to live without external noise, realizing that all is a truth, or speaking in truths and statements, using the void for expressing or using, the vo the wo using words to manipulate, being composed or raising your voice, accepting the crea creator as the only authority or you wanting to be the authority. Last but not least, never forget the fact that everything you speak and hear is something alive, otherwise it couldn't exist, and realize that every particle of that what you say or hear is also something that is alive. There is no space within the realm of audible communication and sound that is not occupied with some form of life. Star Maze, number 14. The guiding force of the conditioned mind, limitations, associations, and non audible communication. Stay aware of your limited and conditioned realities. Tune into the guiding force of non audible, non verbal communication and learn about the endless connections, function, purpose, and interaction regarding non-audible sound and non-audible communication, the world of conditioned realities within the mind. Most of us live in a very limited reality. Realize that our conditioned mind holds all experiences connected to objects, faces, places, feelings, emotions and situations which we have given names. This is our personal and limited database. It is this information we think about and connect with while awake and asleep. It is our familiar world. This guiding force of the energy of all non-audible forms of communication, our thoughts, the endless realities within our mind and the ability of association, will make us aware of the different ways of communication, such as communicating through color, shape, form and sound. It will show us how to decrease the endless non-audible sound waves interfering with our health. It will be our guide to stay open-minded, focused and setting our priorities. Hopefully we can learn to disassociate, to stop judging and to experience things for what they are and to open us for unfamiliar things, but keeping us aware that all is part of the world within our own mind. Non-audible sound and non-audible communication is made possible through the energy substance called ether, which presents itself in three dimensions, all three connected to communication. This is our connection to all non-audible energy waves, such as our thought waves, dreams, wishes, satellites, cell phone, radio, TV, computers, and much more. Our personal limited and conditioned mind, which has all our personal data, 
is recorded through the sense organs functioning as a keyboard. At the moment, we identify, which takes place through association and giving names and connecting feelings and emotion to things we sense, see, touch, taste, hear and smell. We create an association and attachment to them and they become our personal reality. This is our limited source of thinking and experiencing life. Realize that most of the time we are connected to our limited and conditioned realities within our mind, which is like a shopping center. All these realities are conditioned through association and we address them with I know. It is all the things we learned from childhood on and all the things that we have been given names. It is our familiar world, our personal library of everything we think that we know. We think that the mind and this shopping center is our gold mine. Everything is impermanent and nothing will bring us real happiness and peace. We are afraid of the silence and solitude and keep on shopping even while being asleep. Everything that happens in our life is a reaction of all the conditionings, attachments and associations and through this energy we register them, discriminate them and according to our conditionings execute them. This becomes then the reality we live in. Because of this capacity to discriminate we basically judge everything by holding our thumb up or down. We play God on earth. When we pause a minute and stop shopping, we can experience to be concentrated, focused and clear, and non-verbally non communicate within our own limited and conditioned mind, with every cell of our being, others and the world, and make different decisions. It is also through this energy that everything in creation non-verbally communicates with us and with each other, either through form, shape, color, temperature and scent. The mind was created as a communication device for the soul in order to experience creation and the body was the vehicle to drive around with. When our sense organs started to take over the adventure we threw the soul in the trunk of the vehicle and our ego which is, identif is identifying now with the mind and the creation took over the driver's place. Now we take ourselves and this world for real. Know, however, that we have the power of concentration that can help us at least to set priorities. For when we are not concentrated and focused, everything in our familiar mind reality is looking like in a scattered mirror. There are nine openings or doors in our human body, the two, lower, the two lower apertures, the two nostrils, the two eyes, the two ears and one mouth through which all our energy escapes into the external world. But there is one invisible door le leading within. This door is located between our two physical eyes, also called the third eye, and it is the door to our mind in which we can get some organization. The worlds outside these doors are the same as all the realities behind the endless doors of our mind and this shopping center. Walking in the outside world is just like going with our thoughts inside our mind, which is not easy as it all takes us in all directions and sidetracking us. Actually, when we are not organized and focused, they organize our life. The mind operates through the brain and sending through the network of nerves all the information coming from the mind to every cell of our body. Understand however that this energy is just like us and anything else in creation, a creation of opposites. When we fail to tune in to its positive side, we lose our priorities, concentration, focus and clarity and can get easily lost in our limited and conditioned shopping center. It is the mind's task to keep us in our limited and conditioned realities. 
At this point we lose the ability to live in harmony with nature and non-verbally verbally miscommunicate with ourselves, others and the world. Through this energy we keep ourselves busy within our mind which is like a maze, an endless shopping center or theater with endless characters, masks and faces, offering endless limited and conditioned experiences. We keep up the training of uh, associating and stay busy inside the creation and it will not stop until we want to get out. The sum of it all and this guiding force and guiding us in matters of non-verbally communication or non-verbal miscommunication, nature's communication or man-made electrical communication waves, unconditioned realities and conditioned realities, open for the unfamiliar or sticking to the familiar, acceptance of conditioned realities or judging of conditioned realities. Focus and clear or scattered and unclear. Having our priorities in order or poor management of our priorities. Experiencing emotions or connecting our emotions to the things of the world. Having an open mind or closed minded. Realizing the illusion or taking this world for real. Guarding our dreams and wishes or lost in dreams and wishes. Realizing the price and obligations with everything, within everything or playing ignorant. Making peace with all our characters or being at war with our characters. Realizing the duality experience or falling down into the negative passions. Thoughts are coming through us or thoughts are from me. Last but not least, never forget the fact that everything you think or think about is something alive, otherwise it couldn't exist, and realize that every particle of what you think is alive. There is no space within the realm of non-audible communication that is not occupied with some kind of form of life. Spheron, number 15, the guiding force of the universal mind, virtues and higher communication. Live with the higher virtues. Tune into the guiding force of unconditioned thoughts and higher virtues and learn about the endless connections, function, purpose and interaction regarding working with this universal mind and higher virtues. Most of us are unfamiliar with the world of unconditioned thoughts, which is also called the universal mind, which holds all information and experiences possible in creation, the past, moment and future, and as, as well a source of information to live in harmony with creation. It goes beyond our limited and conditioned mind and is also called the higher mind. It is that part with which the great philosophers, inventors and artists were able to tap into. This higher mind holds also the information how to live with the highest virtues and principles. At this place or consciousness, we also have the capacity to communicate with our true self and the creator. This guiding force of the energy of the universal mind and the ability to non-verbally communicate with the Creator will keep us alert of what we ask for. It will guide us in accepting our life as it is, doing our best and leaving all in the hands of the Creator in order not to miscommunicate with Him or judge Him. It will warn us not to crown and worship ourselves or others with the capacity of reason, intellect and worldly knowledge. It will guide us in becoming the observers of our own life instead of playing games in the name of freedom, religion or even the Creator. Hopefully, we can let it coach us to be more by ourselves, to spend time in silence and to live li life with the highest virtues and principles. The dimension of unconditioned thoughts and higher virtues 
is made possible through the energy substance called ether, which presents itself in three dimensions, all three connected to communication. This part of communication takes place at the universal mind, which is like the hard drive of creation, and which holds all the memory of what is possible in the creation. The access to this universal mind is mostly blocked with the reality we are experiencing most of the time, our limited and good conditioned mind tra trained through association. This information and experiences in the universal mind, which we haven't tuned into, is information we haven't associated with. The shopping center is countless times bigger than the shopping center of our limited and conditioned realities, in which we all day shop only for familiar things. The universal mind holds all information of all the things possible in creation, the past, the moment and future. It holds also information about how to live in harmony with creation and it holds the memory of the highest virtues. It is here where the great inventors, artists, philosophers and scientists receive their information and awareness from and often referred as the zone. This is the world not conditioned by us as we have not made any associations but it is a world full of endless new experiences which still belong to the adventure of creation. Most of the time all our energy goes down and out to the desiring of the familiar things, through communicating with them, but there are ways to communicate as well with the universal mind. This energy also functions as a gate observer of the invisible door located at the Crown Center, leading back to our original home, and through this contribution we are able to non-verbally communicate with our real self, our soul and creator, from the highest level. It is our closest connection to the eternal force of life, representing itself through eternal light and eternal sound, which created and sustains everything in creation, otherwise it couldn't exist. And at the ground center it enters our body and keeps every cell alive. This energy is often referred to as the dragon and protector of the gate or door, leading to our spiritual boat. It is the duty of the mind to do anything to keep us in creation, but when the creator decides for a soul to get back in touch again with its spiritual inheritance, it will slowly lose control. This soul will receive the key a ticket or password to open this door, and will have to knock at this door and prepare itself for their home journey, which will all happen at the right time, because in the realm of the Creator, time doesn't exist. In the life of the soul, which has its rebirth, he or she will slowly lose the attachment to the things of the creation, and gets in touch through inner and silent prayer and meditation with the life force, and becomes attached to the Creator again. In the meantime, be alert that this energy and guiding force is forever just like us and anything else in creation, a creation of opposites. Tuning in to its opposite side is non-verbally communicating with our higher self, and non-verbally communicating with ourselves, others and the world with the highest virtues. When we do not tune into this side, we can also experience miscommunication with our higher self and even non-verbally argument, argumentations with the Creator. With the capacity of higher virtues, it, is also, it also keeps everything and everybody busy with doing great things for others and the world, and us forgetting that all what we do is still part of the mind, body and matter, binding everything and everybody to the creation. Great leaders, honest politicians, peace fighters, philosophers, famous writers, religious leaders and people of great knowledge have fallen working with the shadows of the higher virtues, but falling into being crowned by others or crowning themselves for what they do or stand for, which is again connected to expectations and ego. 
even using the name of God has been used for so many wrong reasons and even has justified killing. All this has nothing to do with spirituality, but it's plain ego. They are basically still followers of the mind. Only real saints have those real qualities, having no judgment, no expectation, compassion, empathy and assist wherever they can. Danger of using the higher virtues for the good of the world, thus is still being busy with the world and not using the energy to stay in and to go up. Inside the universal mind there is this invisible door leading to the chamber of silence, also called the waiting room. Here we wait until we are called. This is the waiting dimension for before we can enter our spiritual dimensions. Visualize life and creation as being inside a pyramid in which we can live life from a negative, positive or neutral perspective. And we may call this our point of reference, but we are still inside the body, inside our mind and inside the pyramid. To really see and assist ourselves inside the life of the pyramid, our point of reference needs to be somewhere outside the pyramid. And only from that point of reference outside the pyramid, we can oversee everything, assist, have compassion, and giving us the way not to get involved. Being inside the waiting room, which is still part of the pyramid, we will first have to learn to be still and concentrated. This dimension, is the only real one as it is not limited to anything and knows everything from before the mind was created plus it knows everything from the universal and limited and conditioned mind this is the world beyond the shopping centers which we can only enter when there are no desires anymore regarding the creation to sum it all up this guiding force guides us regarding matters of inner communication with the Creator or miscommunication with the Creator, accepting creation or judging the creation, being in silence or not spending time alone in silence, being in the void or afraid of the void, accepting our book of life or complaining about life and being in judgment, having compassion for mankind or making ourselves and others into victims, using higher power for soul realization or using higher power trying to save the world, keeping the Creator as our crown head or crowning ourselves and others, worshipping the Creator or worshipping the things and people of the world, being humble or showing ego and pride, surrendering to His will or fighting with our will for things in the world, becoming an observer or getting caught in the involvement of worldly matters, using our intuition or staying analytical and calculating, living with higher virtues to please the Creator or using higher virtues to impress others, point of reference above the mind or point of reference the mind and the world, using the universal mind for the common good or using the universal mind for our ego, freeing ourselves from the mind or just talking about free will and freedom in the world. Last but not least, never forget the fact that everything you realize is something alive, otherwise it couldn't exist. And realize that every particle of that realization is also alive. There is no space within the realm of realization and higher nonverbal communication that is not occupied with some kind of form of life. Yin Yang, number 16, the guiding force of duality. Accept and deal with the duality in everything and everybody. We easily forget that everything in creation is created with an opposite and struggle endlessly to accept this phenomena. We run after one side while trying to avoid the other. The guiding force of duality representing the two sides within everything is our guide in accepting the duality within ourselves, others and everything created. It will assist us when we get stuck in pursuing one side and not the other. Life and creation is an adventure in the world of opposites. Life that would not be an adventure if one, one side existed without the other. We know this force very well as it is the yes and the no, the good and the bad, the front and the back, the night and the day and all other opposites in everything. 
Without this, there would not be an adventure, an experience, for how could we recognize one side without knowing the other? The place where we all come from has no opposites, but our body, our mind and everything in creation is part of this phenomenon. Oftentimes we get obsessed with one side of the experience and wanting only that side which is impossible. And many times we want to keep one side of the experience out of our life, which is also impossible. Sometimes we get stuck in one side and forgetting that the other side exists. Whatever we experience, as long as we are in the body, connected with the mind, driven by the sense organs and the world, we will have to deal with the two sides in everything and everybody. We can like one side or dislike the other side of life, but do not forget that oftentimes the less wanted side, the one which is challenging, brings us the most. Through this experiencing life, our character is molded, we get stronger, and we can look at life from two sides. We may call one side wrong, judge it or even condemn it, but both sides stay part of the adventure of life. We can definitely pursue the more positive side of life, but never forget that the other side exists. We might become strong and even think that we have overcome certain weaknesses, but always know that we are as strong as our weakest point, whatever that may be. Last but not least, never forget that while experiencing the duality in creation, that we also can learn to come from a neutral point of view and hopefully rising above the phenomena of the mind and creation and experiencing our real self and true home, which are without opposites. Clock number 17, the guiding force of time. Learn to live in the moment. We experience life by racing through the moments and lose our time by being in the past or future. We force and manipulate time, then have to deal with the stress connected to all other aspects of life. Life and creation involves dealing with the factor time. The guiding force of time will be reminding us that everything in creation has a time and lifespan. It will guide us to stay in the moment and not lose our time by being in the past or future. In order to live a fulfilling and conscious life, we must be in the moment, which is called the present. This phenomenon provides us with time in the adventure of life, but it is about what we are going to do with that time. We know this force very well as the factor time in and with everything. Everything has an allotted time between its birth and death. A minute, 60 seconds, an hour, 60 minutes. A month, four weeks, a year, 52 weeks, and go on. Each particle in creation from the planet, mountains, rocks, trees, has a time to live. And we as well. After the birth of anything, the countdown starts. Without knowing when it's, end, when it's ending. And this is the part of the adventure. For an adventure is about the unknown. From a worldly point of view, everything is bound to town, time, and we have a limited amount of time available. And for that reason, we have to have our priorities right and must become very time efficient. When we do not follow this, we will always fight not having enough time because we are wasting and losing our time. Then we have to understand that everything is connected to a time schedule of high and low energy, like the time under the energy of the moon at night, the energy of the day, but also every organ and system internally and externally is part of the time schedule or clock, so to speak. We have come a long way on our planet with many things and especially science and able to manipulate the growing time of produce, animals, human muscles and the artificial preserving of products. But forget that our health and the health of the planet is suffering as a reaction. Although we do not think in the following term, we have access to a time machine called the mind, in which we can travel back into the past or into the future, but also able to race through the moment. We can use the past as a library of books to be used as reference, 
but we do not need to read the books again. Otherwise, we miss out on being in the present moment. We can travel into the future and have visions and set some goals, but we must do this without any expectation. Otherwise, it will affect our present moment and affect the future by having lost the acceptance of the present moment. In general, we are seldom in our body and are time traveling or wearing ourselves out rushing in the moment and through time. This is called being stressed. And who wouldn't be by creating such a friction? Seemingly, we are always running out of time. Could it be that we are trying to do too much and too fast instead of experiencing the moment? When we understand that time is a trap within our mind, but trusting that everything will come exactly in time and on time, and, we'll, and when we set our priorities right, then there is even time for everything. As a matter of fact, realize that we can only really live in the moment. The past is gone and the future not there yet. When we would live in full consciousness in this fact, we would need at least half of our life to tell our life story at the time of our physical death. But unfortunately, and it's sad when we hear people talking out their life story in a few hours, which means that they have only lived a few hours. Looking from another level, the level of our soul, which never dies, we have all the time in the world and could ease up. Time is actually an illusion, being part of the illusion called life and creation. And when we connect to our real self, we get that confirmation. Butterfly. Number 18. The guiding force of change. Learn to go with the ever-changing adventure. We are always busy demand, demanding either change in certain matters and others we refuse to ex accept change. The guiding force of change reminds us that change is the most consistent factor in the universe as everything is subject to change, whether we like it or not. It will reminding us to go with the ever-changing experiences life has to offer. We cannot stop the changes, visible or invisible, to the human eyes, but we can go with the flow. The changes we would like to see in others and in the world is an active process of letting go and not resisting changes within ourselves. Change plays a very important part in the adventure of our life, and we know it very well as the phenomena change change in ourselves, others and everything. This force represents the most consistent factor in the universe as everything is constantly changing, either to our liking or not, as said before. Seldom we want to go with the ever-changing experiences life has to offer, for we want certain things to change and others not, and this all to our expectation. On one hand, we want adventure, and on the other hand, we want security. We mostly complain about others not able to change, so we can deal easier with them, but we do not want to change ourselves in most cases. Change is happening all the time. Everybody is constantly changing. If we want it or not, we will get older, and everything else is going through its own changes. It is not only through our mind that we struggle with change. It is only through our mind that we struggle with change. Life is an ever-changing adventure which is beautiful, free of stagnancy and boredom, but we free certain things like keeping a picture. When we are looking for change, realize that this is the easiest thing to solve by tuning in to change. On the other hand, we have made so many changes that are unfortunately not in balance with nature, destroying our body and planet, and now we cannot keep up with the changes we have to make to reverse the process. We are screaming that change needs to happen, but why do we not start by ourselves? The only thing that never changes is actually our real self, the soul, which is the real security we are looking for. But rather than searching for our soul, we stay in the battle with wanting or resisting changes in the ever-changing world. Cycles. Number 19. The guiding force of cycles. Tune into the cycles of life. 
everything in creation is part of an ongoing cycle. Whatever comes around, comes back around. The guiding force of cycles will be reminding us that in creation, everything from the smallest to the biggest creations is part of a cycle. It will assist us living with these cycles. How we can prepare ourselves, how we can go with them, how and, not, and how not to interfere with them, how to enjoy them, and also warning us about the consequences of manipulating them, affecting our health and the well-being of the planet. This force reminds us that in creation everything goes through cycles and that life creation depends on them. It is present with every breath and step we take, and we know this force as the cycles and circles within our own mind, as the cycle of circulating our blood, feeding every cell of our body, or when we eat as the cycle of digestion, assimilation and elimination. It is the present in our thought, body, it is present in our thought, body and emotion, all being part of a big adventure called life in which everything comes and goes. Just like we come and one day have to go, everything is part of the cycle of life. We are very much aware of its existence through the four seasons of the year, the cycle of the moon, the woman's cycle, the cycle of the seven days of the week and the cycles of time, all continuously reoccurring and giving us different feelings and experiences. All of this is free of charge, but oftentimes, or most of the time, not appreciated or even acknowledged. We all get so easily impatient while going through a particular part of a cycle and want to be already in the next. We complain about certain aspects of the natural cycles of life. We like the summer and do not like autumn and winter. Just be prepared. Have an umbrella and a winter coat. We like when we are able to do what we want, but do not like when our body gets sick and is in need of cleaning. Everything is part of a cycle, and when we go with these natural cycles, everything goes much smoother. We do not want to deal with certain aspects of life in each cycle, and do irrational things that interfere with the natural cycles of life, and we, pay, and we pay a big price for it. Most important is to understand that we not only pay a big price, but that we are missing out of things being part of our life adventure. In this modern age, with science on a high level, man is able to manipulate various natural cycles, but again forgetting that there is a big price to be paid, affecting the health and well-being of himself and the planet. Scale Number 20. The guiding force of balance. It is nature's duty to recreate balance. Some of us seek perfect balance in a world affected by every action, while others are actively disturbing the balance. Nature challenges itself in subtle ways, yet keeping some kind of balance, but it is us humans who create imbalance in every way possible. The guiding force of balance will be reminding us of these facts and showing us that it is the duty of nature to always restore balance, which is mostly a painful experience and sometimes even a devastating one. It will be guiding us to assist the process of re-establishing balance or to prevent the imbalance. This force plays a very important part in the adventure of our life and we know it very well, as it is always knocking on everybody's door, either personal, waking up entire areas, countries, or the entire planet, when things are out of balance and need our attention in order to re-establish balance again. It is the duty, being part of nature, to always restore balance when an imbalance occurs. It makes us aware of imbalances, first in a subtle way, trying to tune into our intuition and inner sense of understanding. When this doesn't get our attention, it will make us aware in more physical terms through more obvious signs, and when this doesn't help, it will make the situation so devastated that we will have to do something. Funny or not funny, actually even when the time of devastation arrives, we are often still not willing to claim any responsibility. 
We see ourselves as victims and giving the power of trying to reorganize the balance over in other people's hands. We do this when we really get sick or when financial, economical, social or even natural dis disasters strike us. In all cases, we are the creators of the imbalances within our own mind from the challenges, confrontations and struggle we experience in any aspect of our life to the deforestations, global warming, wars and problems in the third world. We are contributing in one way or another, but what are we going to do about it? Negative thoughts, negative emotions, destructive habits, unhealthy food, stress, pushing and complaining are a part of our experience and creation, which disturbs balance, but which easily can be restored by being aware of them and taking some action. However, when we do not lead a conscious life and experiencing imbalance, we will straight we will straight away create new imbalances, even when we went through some challenges to recreate balance. We always want to go straight away back to our old ways of living, and this is the cause that created the imbalance. And on top, we try to establish balance with one method or a couple where we are just familiar with and do not any research because there are many ways to re-establish balance. We do not accept the imbalance, play victim, others need to take care of us. And when we see it as something separate from our life and we see it as something separate from our life adventure. It is about accepting, claiming, responsibility, understanding why the imbalance showed up, doing research, finding various ways to try to recreate, the, uh, recreate balance when there is an imbalance and approaching this as well as an adventure, part of our life adventure. Base. Number 21. The guiding force of necessities. Simplicity is the key. Most of us are suffering from stress, which is the result of many things, but one of the most contributing factors is that we make life very complex. The guiding force of necessities will be reminding us that we can experience a simple and contented life in all aspects, or choose to complicate life by adding and adding, resulting in stress and endless obligations. It will remind us of how we complicate things and guiding us in simplifying our life. We know this force very well as it represents the basic needs of our body, which we need to take care of, such as food, water, sunshine, rest, cleaning, clothing, and giving it shelter. It represents the simple gestures of greeting somebody, making an eye contact, or sending out our genuine love and compassion to everybody when we, when we meet them or think of them. It gives us the simple words with deep meaning and often reminds us on the simple truth that lies within us, which gives us peace, contentment and love, and reminds us about the Creator. It is the simplicity and beauty we see in all the things in creation, the simple unforgettable moments, and the innocent humor and laughter. However, because of this within us and around us, it also calls up our other side of being not content, and wanting to dress up the simple things of life and often ending up wanting more and more. Through its existence, we can easily end up in the complexity of life and making things very complicated. So we either experience a simple and content life in all aspects or choose to complicate life by adding and adding, resulting in consequences and endless obligations. We can always simplify things from scratching things off our to-do list our meals, our workouts, or our way of thinking. When the complexity of life has taken us, it is all because of our own doing. But never forget, we can also return to simplicity, just taking care of the basic needs of life and enjoying the simple things of life and experiencing life in quality. The secret of quality, quality living lays in the quality of the things we hear meaning information of consciousness, easy talks and words spoken with care. It is the quality of live organic foods, which bring us quality energy and life to our body. It is the time and care we put into making things with our heart 
and giving quality time to ourselves and others. When we live with this quality, we will also leave as well almost no waste behind that cannot be recycled by nature in an easy way. Quality brings quality. Puzzler number 22. The guiding force of wholeness. No need to go more into separation. We are geniuses in separating things. From separating ourselves from ourselves, others and nature, and separating everything in parts and pieces. We do this in every aspect of life and then spend the rest of our life looking for the missing pieces. The guiding force of wholeness will remind us that there is no need to separate things in creation, although we may do this for scientific reasons. But will be reminding us that everything is already whole and complete. We know this force very well as it is the sum total of everything in everything. We, however, are geniuses in separating things. From separating ourselves from ourselves, others and natures, and separating everything in parts and pieces, and we do this in every aspect of life, and then looking again our entire life for missing pieces. There is no need to separate things in creations, although we may do this for research reasons, but realize everything is already whole and inseparable. The cause of us separating everything in parts and pieces and looking at everything as individual and separate unit, units is because we are disconnected from our creator and our real true self, our soul. We are not at the same level of consciousness anymore. Without realizing, we feel lost and lonely. But we are all looking for something, and that something is within ourselves and not to be found outside. Although once we unite on the inside, the unity on the outside is automatically included. Because of this separation, we look for security in the creation and look at everything being a frame or a puzzle and then start seeking to get all the puzzle pieces together. In science, we can analyze seawater and putting all the components together in a laboratory, but no fish is able to survive in that water. We cannot create life. And there is always more than the eye can meet. We look at everything this way and call one piece, one man, one group, one country, the true seemingly having it all together. And another piece, a man, a group or country, a rotten piece that needs to be destroyed. We forget to look at the essence and wholeness that is within everything and which holds everything together. We think in every aspect of our life that there is something missing, which is connected, that we are disconnected. As long as we think that there is something missing, we will be discontent and funny enough, when we get that piece what we think that is missing in any aspect of our life, we are not content again. There is always something else missing. We have to reconnect with, inner, with our inner self, our soul and the Creator as much as possible. And we will also see then that our life is already whole and complete. It is about learning to love it all, even when we see and experience things as separate. Imagine we only love some parts of ourselves only accept certain parts of our partner and friends, when we only like certain actions or staff members in our, vision, in, in our business, when we only accept certain cultures and others not, the things, characteristics, people and other pieces we do not love from our puzzle called life, we feel like a parasite, an outcast and abandoned and will rebel like a child that is not accepted and not loved. So it is all about integrating everything and everybody in our life or living in separation and separating everything in parts and pieces. Mesh number 23, the guiding force of comprehension. There is always more than you can see or comprehend. We are living in the age of technology where our intellect has reached its peak, but where we are still in the infant stages where real knowledge is concerned. We are able to analyze many things, and it may help in some areas, but realize that we are still touching the surface, not comprehending the entire picture. 
this guiding force of comprehension will be reminding us that there is always more to discover inside the web of history and everything that occurs. There are no coincidences and everything happens for a reason. But be careful announcing that we know. We know this force very well when we are busy analyzing and trying to figure things out and may come to some kind of conclusion, but we will never see the entire picture. There is always much more behind the curtain which we cannot see from the level of consciousness we have. We are almost, we are mostly look and analyze from a very limited perspective, connected to our conditionings and the education we had. As long as we realize this, you hopefully do not end up in making statements and conclusions that say, this is the way, this is the truth, and that's why. Only when we would be able to be at the level of consciousness of the Creator would we be able to see and comprehend the entire network of why and how. When something happens that we like or dislike, we may say this or that is the result of it, but that there are enormous numerous things that contributed to this fact. Like a sudden life change, it is just because of that one thing we did or was there much more at work behind the scene. We contribute certain success in business to our smart way of advertisement or any idea, but is that really the trick? Why does it work by one and not by the other? We have a headache and we take something for it. The headache disappears, so it must be that what I look for and what I took. The next time you have the headache and we do the same procedure, but the headache doesn't disappear. We seem to have a solution for everything, but are they really it or is there more at work? We analyze a certain disease and we find the remedy and the disease is gone. Is it really gone? And was the cause that that thing we analyzed or was it merely the drop that went over the bucket that we analyzed or had a solution for? There are possibly obvious contributing factors, but the, bo the bottom line is that there are some more factors and many more factors playing a role. We make gods out of people, methods and remedies, seemingly curing and, curing and rescuing us. But why is the same person assisting or the same remedy not working for everyone? We all eat from the same dish and some get a food poisoning and others not. We might come with the answers that those not affected had a strong immune system, but did they really have that? We may live a perfect healthy lifestyle in all aspects, but is that a 100% guarantee that we will not get confronted with a disease? Should we try, should we stop trying to assist in any area of life? No, but do not give it so much power because the bottom line is only when it's meant to be and there are endless factors behind the curtain we cannot see just keep it with saying that we are experiencing ideal number 24 the guiding force of improvement and perfection there is always room for improvement we all trying to find that perfect something and looking for it in all aspects of life, but we end up frustrated and feeling defeated. The guiding force of improvement and perfection will be encouraging us and showing us that there is always room for improvement. However, seeking perfection in an imperfect world, which is created in duality bound to time and change, is chasing an illusion. We all know this force very well, as we are always busy with the phenomena improvement from the moment we were born, learning to eat by ourselves, improving from crawling to standing, walking to running, learning to dress ourselves up and going to school and being busy with getting better and better in endless subjects. We end up in sports or busy with other hobbies and end up with a profession and possibly our own business. We are always trying to improve something and oftentimes getting stressed out by not succeeding to perfect things. Even when we are not busy with it actively and practically, 
we may look at things and others and thinking that they should improve themselves. Imagine ourselves sitting on the TV and watching our favorite sports team. We would want them to improve and to be perfect. Perfection in an imperfect world is unfortunately impossible. But there is something perfect within us, and that is our soul. But we seldom are actively busy with it. On the conscious level of our soul, we and the Creator of all, we are all perfect, and because of this, its essence shines through our human form. We are not in conscious contact with our real self, and as a result, we seek perfection in the mortal and imperfect world. We would say no, but we need to improve so many things, of course, but do not lose sight in approaching the inner drive from the wrong angle. Realize that inside everything is the essence of the Creator, the eternal, the eternal source of life, which is love, and that love is perfect, not the shell and not the bodies. Let us be busy with improving ourselves, but always ask if we are not doing this just for our ego, vanity, power, and for our pocket, and is it contributing to the lives of others? We are also busy with improving our life, our immediate surroundings and the world, but don't see that all at the same time we cause destruction to ourselves and the world. It is possibly done for the wrong reasons. Are we aware that many a times that we call being successful as a result of our improvement that it causes actually destruction? Maybe we have to think a little bit more because the modernization has come to a point that we, are, that we cannot continue the way we are doing. This time the improvements and changes we have to make are crucial and it needs to start with us as individuals. Chain, the guiding force of order, place and function. Accept your place and the roles you have to play. Look at the stars and planets and every detail in creation all having its exact place. There is an order to everything in creation, so things can function properly, but it is only mankind that interferes with this order. The guiding force of order, place and function will be reminding us that there is an order to everything, that everything and everyone has an allotted place, so everything in creation can function. It will be assisting us in accepting our place and to be content hopefully reducing our complaints and the tendency to run away. We all know this force when we look into the universe with its uncountable stars and planets all having their place and, a certain dis and standing at a certain distance from each other in order to function. Imagine the sun would come a little closer to our planet what would happen. There is an order in nature where everything and every creature has its place and purpose in order that all can function. Our mind and body, with all its organs and systems, is like a universe, where everything has its place in order to make it function properly and optimally. It is unfortunately that we as individuals disturb the order and proper function of everything. We do not accept our place in any area of our life, either this is at home, at work or in the society. And we place things around to our liking or takes things out of its normal and natural place and wonder why we're experiencing chaos and destruction. With all our modern technology, being a consumer society, we are destroying our health and the health of our planet. Just think about the deforestation and the pollution and the artificial foods we consume. We call ourselves the top of the chain or ladder, but look what we do to ourselves, others and the planet. There are three kinds of people. The first are those always on the run, running away from situations, ending up in new ones, and not accepting the and the situation again. The second ones are those staying in situations, but they judge and have a hard time to deal with it. They just keep on complaining. The third group is a very few individuals accept their place, adjust and reach a higher consciousness and are content. We will say, but how can you do this? By accepting that we ourselves are the creator who wrote the book of our life. 
In other words, we have to look at life and live it from a different and possibly higher perspective. The complaining about almost anything has taken its place amongst us throwing everything out of order. The things in nature and inside our body are showing abnormal behavior as well. We call this cancer. Who is the owner of our planet and our body? What is the essence of everything? The creator? Is it not? So treat everything in this respect. We are all equally important in the chain of life and we are all connected and interconnected. Imagine life as a theater on as a theater where we are all on stage but seldom accept the script we have to read and perform. We complain not only about our script but others as well and even do not want them want them to be on the stage at all. Let us first accept our place, accept the place others have to play and our role and accept our role and to play it the best way we can. There are no losers and winners, for everybody comes on stage for a while and will disappear again. Play it for the creator, the only one who sits in the audience watching us. Destiny, the guiding force of cause and effect. Accept the realities you have created yourself. Most of us living like victims, living a reactive life, complaining about everything, pointing and blaming others for our personal situations and the circumstances in the world. The guiding force of cause and effect will be reminding us that every action will not just have one reaction but a chain reaction and that what goes around must come around. It will let us know that we are the creators of our own realities. There is a big price to be paid for everything, even though it might not be instantly, but somewhere in the future. By reminding us of these facts, we will hopefully start acting differently and not reacting in shock. We know this force because of the reality we live in today, how we experience our life, others and the world, which is the sum of all total actions of our past. We may like or dislike this reality, reality but we are the creator of it. Most of us will not even accept this fact and rather point out with the index finger and blame others for the reality we are living in at this moment in time. Some of us will talk about genetic inheritance, others about karma, but the fact is that all of us start with a package. We came with a package, but when we do not accept that either we or the creator wrote wrote it, we stay victims in our book of life, lived out on the stage in the theater of life. Look at our body, which is the result of our genetic package we have chosen, and then our body formed and deformed itself throughout life as a result of all our thoughts and foods and actions and conditions. The same it is in all areas of life. The cause of any action into the world starts, however, with a thought. One thought affects everything without us realizing it. Imagine everything in the universe, every particle, creation, cell and molecule as marbles sitting in a box. And this box is called creation. Push one marble and see that each action has an effect on all other marbles. The box which is creation is a reality connected to our mind. And in this realm of mind and matter, Good and bad actions result in good and bad reactions, but all of them still keep us trapped in the box. We must create as much comfort in the box as we want, but we are still in the box. We play power games within the box from trying to rule with power over others, within our family, at the job, in sports, community and country. All actions and reactions are connected to the one we see in the mirror and who has been given a name. Yes, our life is mostly just connected to our ego, which is our mind, and this is the reality we live in. We try to conquer within the box, but we should conquer our ego. We talk about freedom, but see how much we are bound to life in the box. Our life and body has needs, 
The world around us, from the economy to the weather, all have an influence on our well-being. All our reactions and actions are the effect of previous actions and reactions. The way we think, eat and do are all about the reality within the box. We forget that we are a soul, a particle of the eternal ocean of the Creator, and we only connect with the body, mind and matter, all just part of life inside the box. We are in in an unconscious state of being, being separate from our true essence, and try to reduce the suffering of our soul by finding comfort in the box. The life, actions and reactions continues no matter what inside the box, but we can reunite with our true self and learning to be in the world but not becoming of it. At the moment you are in silent prayer and meditation. We will become the observer of our life in the box. We will react and act differently, and we will deal differently with everything and will interfere less. The freedom we seek is, sometime, is something outside this box. This is reuniting and getting attached to our soul and the Creator, which will detach us from the box. Think about this. Every thought and action inside the creation is making a deal and contract with the mind, which is in charge of keeping us distracted, attached and attracted to the creation. Ice Flame Number 27 The Guiding Force of Contraction and Expansion Wanting more or less? Quality or quantity? Many of us are aware of the contracting and expanding force, represented by the sun and the moon in our realm. We take precautions in regards to the cold in the winter and the heat of the summer, and in the building of bridges and installing windows, but we forget that everything is subject to these forces, which creates unnecessary struggle. This guiding force of expansion and contraction will be reminding us of this fact in every aspect of our life, from the contraction and expansion of our heart, our muscles and cells, to what we eat, think and do. It will let us know how to tune in to these force, forces of nature to better our sister cells and will make us more aware of the ways we interfere with those forces and hopefully prevent us from unnecessary struggle. We tend to go for more and more and end up running after quantity and losing quality on every level. We have become a consumer society. It is all about more and more and by doing so destroying our planet. Our planet is in stress like our body which is in stress by trying to do too much. We prolong the expanding energy of the day too late in the night and not giving our body enough time to recover under the energy of the moon. We consume mostly foods that went through a heating processes and only have the element of expansion, which we can see in the expansion of our body size, weak and flabby organs, and showing endless signs of disease. Like a person in pain whose body contracts. Realize that when we expand our organs and tissues, that there will come an additional space available and that will fill itself with waste like having an extra room in our house which becomes a storage place of things we mostly don't even use we are chained by our desires for the things of the world and the slave of our conditionings which we call pleasures we can expand our knowledge and awareness but never think that we know everything for the more we discover the more we come to the conclusion that we know very little we have created jail after jail closing ourselves off in small rooms in our homes and offices sitting in front of a tv or computer and trying to conquer the world we live in a box and are discontented from our true adventures of life we think that we can do anything and are always on the move to do more and not seeing the price we have to pay for all of this. 
every item, gift, possession in our world goes together with obligation, ob obligations which bind us and enslaves us. We think that we are smart, but see what we have done and what we are doing to ourselves, our health, our fellow man and the world. We have closed ourselves off from nature, from a level of higher consciousness and the Creator. Reconnect with these aspects and we will think twice before we do anything. Be more by being more by ourselves and spending more time in silent prayer and meditation. In our world, people become cold as ice. Their hearts harden because we are playing with it in the wrong way. And just as we play with the force of expansion in the wrong way, by just wanting it all for ourselves. Most of us are living in our head and not coming from our heart, a heart which is hardened and we try even to bypass it. We contract our heart and hand because we think that we can possess things and people. Remember that nothing in this world is ours. We came without anything and will go without anything. All is just lent to us for a while. So experience these gifts that come and go and share all that is not ours anyway. From a soul point of view, which is our real self, all our energy expands into the world, but at the same time, the energy scatters. When we would meditate and be with our soul and true self, we would contract or close off from these external things and the world and be becoming one pointed and bringing all that scattered energy to a one point. Realize the danger for letting all our energy go out into the world without staying connected with our real self, our soul and the Creator. Because all the things and people of the world may bind us to the world by becoming attached to them. Once we are attached, we are contracting and trying to hold on to it. Parrot, number 28. The guiding force of repetition. Use the ability to repeat for the right reason and purpose. Everything we think, say and do, the way we dress, act and react, and all our worldly skills are trained and conditioned through repetition. This guiding force of repetition will be guiding us to learn practical things in the world, but also reminding us that every conditioning, good or bad, in our eyes is created through repetition. So we either learn to repeat positive actions in every aspect of our life or negative ones, or even using the capacity to condition destructive patterns. We know this force very well because we are busy with it all day long. We are learning new things through repeating them either at home, in work, in sports or skills, and in things we are training ourselves in. This force is very useful for practical things in life, but not for the repeating of things that will bind us to this world. We are also so busy with the repeating of the same things over and over again. And this is a form the way we think about ourselves, others and the world, to the tastes we have developed, the way we speak, walk and act and react. This doesn't only include the positive, but also all the negative conditionings and habits we have created and repeated by repetition over and over again. Many of these conditionings are so often repeated that they are so dominant that they completely rule our life. We talk so much about freedom and free will in our world, but our thinking Actions, reactions, tastes and emotions are completely conditioned. Anything is already based in our conditionings. Yes, even the choices we think we make. We are like a parrot, but not even a parrot in the jungle, but one in a cage, and a cage built by ourselves. Call it a parrot, or a programmed robot. As long as we are connected to the mind, we are connected to the endless conditioned programs within it. Remember that once we were a pure soul, which took on a communication device, the mind and the body, to explore creation. 
the mind was directed by our soul, but unfortunately the mind under the dictates of our sense organs took over the adventure. Our life was meant to be an adventure of ongoing experiences of new things to be experienced, but by using the power of repetition, we have created endless patterns that now dominate our life and restricting us in, ex in experiencing the new. We live with a false security, and when we look at all the advertisements in our world, we know exactly what is indicated here. We live, the lives we live are not adventurous, but controlled by many false securities. Break away from these patterns that take away our adventure and make our stay here with unneeded negative and unhealthy and destructive habits that cause so much trouble and so much pain. In order to let the soul become in charge of the adventure again, we need to become the manager of the mind. It needs to be trained in repeating something that is not from this world, but from the realm of the soul. Detachment will not work only by attaching it to something that is far more attractive than anything of this world that will do it. Meditation and silent prayer are the answer. Know that the power of repetition can also be used to our adventure, advantage in order to free ourselves from the robot. Look for a teacher or master who has accomplished this mission. Mirror. The uh, number 29. The guiding force of reflections. All you see and experience are reflections of yourself. We complain about almost everything that happens to us, others and the world, but we forget that all is merely a reflection from within ourselves. This guiding force of reflections will be reminding us that the eternal world, the external world, is a reflection and projection of the internal world within our own mind. We would not be able to recognize or experience anything when we would not have that thought, picture, feeling, smell and taste already within us. This guiding force represents one of the most difficult forces, but when we understand and accept this, all things point to ourselves and there is nothing to complain about anymore. From that moment on, we claim full responsibility, we receive the power that enabled us to experience life completely differently. This force is present in our life as a mirror and hopefully we understand that we can only meet ourselves in everybody and everything. The one we like or not, accept or not, respect or not. There are endless characters within us, representing all the masks of a Mardi Gras celebration, and all of them are reflection, reflecting themselves in the outside world in which we get confronted with them. The characteristics in and faces of other people, those we like, in others or not, they are within us. It is about accepting all these characters, so no one of them starts running our life. When we fear, fear appears on the outside. When it is destruction within ourselves, in one of the other areas, is destruction that will show up as a mirror in our life. When it is sadness we play with, sadness will project itself on the outside. So always realize that what we experience on the outside is merely a reflection from within ourselves. But also, the greatness we see in others, the ugliness, the beauty, happiness and the pains, it is all within us. This is the same when we do not like somebody who is always late. Let's look deep inside of ourselves and we will find in one or more areas that we are too late too. Maybe we do at being too late to take care of our health, or maybe we are always too late for our morning prayers. So the things we experience externally do not have to be exactly identical to what we are doing to ourselves, but when we look deep, we will find the reflection. To add on to all the faces and character characteristics we meet on the outside, we can also meet them in things, in places, and in situations. Sadness, 
we do not need to see in some other people or other people's face but it can also be projecting in getting involved in sad situations we can hear sad music or we see something that makes us sad on the tv we keep on experiencing life from an external point of view in which we point out and explain everything from external happenings most likely making ourselves into victims or victims of circumstances and we seek to understand and we seek to understand that everything is already inside our mind and that everything we see and experience is already a reflection from within our mind this force will show us constantly what is going on within ourselves to the extent reminding us what we do to the planet and the wars we fight as a reflection of ourselves let's talk for a minute about the external wars taking place on our planet do we look at the wars and battles on the outside as a reflection of ourselves think about how the big leaders fight with each other using words threatening each other we are at war with ourselves in our mind with certain parts of our body with certain characteristics of ourselves basically we are at war we hear about people hiding mines to keep the enemies away and at the same time shooting off missiles and dropping bombs this phenomenon reflects the bombs of negative thinking towards ourselves and the consuming of unhealthy foods which are like bombs and a minefield which we can step on and explode now or in the future these explosions come in the way of sickness illness disease or fights within ourselves and others we do a lot of harm to ourselves and at the same time harm to others through our thoughts and even in our dreams much is written about chemical warfare but look how much chemicals we are putting in our body breathing drinking and eating do we read the ingredient labels of the items before we purchase or consume them we may have little influence avoiding the bigger wars but we can at least stop the war within ourselves with others around us and within our own body this force is one of the most difficult forces to accept for when we understand and accept this all points to us and there is nothing to complain about anymore it all boils down to working on ourselves and then there is the real us a soul which we seldom see in the mirror because we keep only the company of the mind scattering us as pieces of a broken mirror the real search and life quest is to find that within ourselves and when we look into the world at that moment it will change completely but first we have to go beyond the realm of mind and matter and keeping the company of those special souls who have done this beat number 30 the guiding force of vibration and attraction realize that what you are you will attract or repel mostly without realizing its deeper meaning we see things and people attracting or repulsing each other the guiding force of rhythm and vibration will reminding us that everything in creation has a unique rhythm and vibration producing audible and non-audible sounds that attract or repel each other like magnets it will keep us aware that we will attract those vibrations that are within us so we either attract gentle loving magical and harmonious things circumstances and positive people or we attract the negative and struggle in every aspect of our life all is a result of how and what we think do and eat everything in creation each thought food item and action has its unique rhythm and vibration effects ever thought why certain types of people are around us what is it that attracts us to them or them to us what draws us to certain places and clothes and houses and even food why is it that we get all the time confronted with similar problems 
all of this has to do with an energy vibration that we have become, being a result of all our past, what we thought, said, ate and did. Each thought, word, food item and every action and reaction in our life has an individual rhythm and vibration, and the sum total of it all is our personal energy vibration for the moment, like our personal ID, so to say. All these individual vibrations either attract similar vibrations or they repel each other, and so is it the same with our sum total of everything. That's why we attract certain people around us who have similar vibrations. But also each town, country, and actually anything has also a certain vibration, which is the sum total of all the people within that and all their thoughts and actions and habits. All of this we could visualize as a magnet, attracting or repelling each other. This is the dance of energies and rhythms. So we can either experiment with the negative rhythms and vibrations and attract negative rhythms and vibrations to us in the form of people, places, things and events, or we experiment and play with the positive rhythms and vibrations and attract positive rhythms and vibrations to us in the form of people, places, things and events. Cool, isn't it? Mostly without realizing its deeper meaning, we see things and people attracting or repulsing each other. It will keep us aware that we will attract those vibrations that are within us. So we either attract gentle, loving, magical and harmonious things and circumstances and people, or we attract the negative and struggle in every aspect of our being. When we want a different life experience regarding our own magnet in our life, it is not changing one aspect but many, so that the sum total of a vibration changes. It is for this reason that when we want to lose weight, want to get fit, or really want to get rid of all our signs and symptoms regarding disease, seeking a change in our relationship or business, that we cannot be successful by changing one or two things only. We must address as many aspects as possible to see the change we would like to see. Why is it that people speaking the same language are attracted to each other? Why is it that people in the same profession are attracted to each other? Why is it that certain people are attracted to the same food? Why is it when we feel happy that happy people show up around us? Why is it that when we feel down that everybody seems to be down? Simply because they attract each other like a magnet. Learn another language and see what happens. Study for another profession and see what happens. Do some research on organic and raw foods and see our habits change. Start eating more healthy foods and see what happens. Stay positive and see what happens. Become more aware and see what happens. Hang around positive and conscious people and see what happens. In general, we stay moving around in the familiar but when we start experiencing negative effects and finding ourselves complaining and living in misery, it might be wise to integrate or do something different than new. When you want to experience something not from this world, we connect to the energy vibration of the Creator. And this energy is within us as well and inside everything in creation. This is the real rhythm or real heartbeat of life. Care heart. Number 31. The guiding force of service. Learn to serve without expectations. Most of us want to be served or serve with a reward in mind, forgetting that the Creator and the entire creation is actually serving us. The guiding force of service will remind us of this fact and guiding us in serving the Creator and His creation in return. It will make us up, it will wake us up each time we desire to serve ourselves. It will show up and show us how we manip manipulate and confuse service with expectation in all areas of life and guides us to become a better servant of the Creator and His creation. 
We all know this force very well by looking around us and see what is serving us without any expectation and any discrimination. The sun serves us with warmth. The air, the water and all the food coming from Mother Earth serving us all without any discrimination. It all just serves, cares and loves everyone and everything. We are as souls on an adventure in creation and now it is about how you take care of things, how to serve the Creator and the creation in return. Look how we have abused the planet and continue to drain it from all its resources. When we continue this way, nature will not be able to serve us anymore. Sometimes we care a little, but again, just about those things close around us and forget that we are all a part of the entire planet and even universe for everything is connected and we have a responsibility towards all. Some of us are maybe busy trying to preserve the planet but forget that this can only happen with us as individuals becoming aware how we are not serving ourselves in the best way in all our aspects and departments. In general we have lost the ability to really take care not just regarding caring about the Creator and creation, but also in, in regards to ourselves. We mostly look to be served and serving to be cared for, and when we serve we have expectations or reward in mind. Serving is about understanding that all is created and sustained by the life force, which is only love. It comes from the Creator, the ocean of love, which loves and serves without any expectation. And when we can tune into this, we will find some happiness. We will become aware how to serve our Creator, our body, mind, others and the entire creation. We may say, but I'm a caring person. But are we really a caring person? Do we give time to our soul? Do we really care about our health? Did we make all the investigations what food do to our body? Do we really care about our children and providing them with food that we have not maybe investigated about? Do we care about keeping this body fit or is it for other reasons? Do we think before we say something? Do we really care regarding that effect it has? Do we have a grip on our mind or do we let it do whatever it wants? Do we realize that every action has a reaction? Do we really care? Maybe we know about certain things, what they do to our body or environment, but why are we still doing it? Do we really care about honest and quality business or is it for the power and the money? Do we expect that the healthcare practitioners and insurances take care of us? But what are we going to prevent? And what do we do to prevent it all? Do we expect others to take care of us? Do we volunteer work and community service? Maybe we are a great giver in money, but maybe those receiving it would rather have you more around. You may want to look a little closer regarding the subject caring, loving, assisting and service. In order to learn about real service, we may, we may want to look into the lives of those great spiritual individuals before others made their teachings into a religion, or the life of other great men and women that rendered selfless service. When we keep in mind that inside everything and everybody is that essence of life and love, which we have called God or any name given to it, we will serve Him and His creation with the right actions in all aspects of life. Serving is coming from love and letting that love from the Creator flow through us because how can we give from us when everything belongs to Him in the first place? It is, is not everything loaned to us just for a while? By serving with this consciousness, we can just serve for the sake of serving without any expectations. 
When we serve from the level of our soul, being the center, with the intention just to serve the Creator with the highest virtues, and from this center, outwards, serving our body, mind, partner, family and friends and others and the rest of the world in that fashion, all is achieved. It is not about what we want in life, but what is given to us, and then taking care of that in the best way possible. Running around in the world and presenting ourselves with our ego, intellect and even diplomas is running around without a soul. It is about what we bring to the table as a spiritual being and how we contribute and serve with the highest virtues such as unconditional love and compassion and empathy. It is to become a manager of love in action through service and we need to be one step ahead all the time. A life of service is being in the business of prevention. When we reach out first, we do not need to wait for another to reach out to us. When we greet first, hug and kiss, we have already our reward by having given that which we may want to receive or not get. And that is then completely irre irrelevant. When we at work are one step ahead of the game and doing our job well, nobody will be on our back. It is the same with serving our body with health, and we may not need a healthcare practitioner for the things we didn't do. Serving, caring, loving, and contributing is an active process, and the end of the day, looking back and see how we have served, served and shared. This is our real inheritance to ourselves, others, and the entire world. In general, we use the word relationship in connection with having a partner, but actually we have a relationship with everything. Everything is alive. Our car, our home, our clothes, the sun, a garden, a plant, and everything else in creation as well. For it could not live when it would not be connected to the life force. And just like in a human relationship, we can have our difficulties with anything as well. Think about getting upset when our car breaks down or when we have to repair something in the house. A in a relationship, we have something to offer, and the people and all other things as well. The sun offers us warmth, the car the opportunity to get around faster, and our homes offer us shelter. And to realize that we have a relationship with everything can spare us from a lot of struggle. How are we going to serve everything that serves us. DNA The guiding force of individuality. There is no need for comparing and competing. Our entire existence is based on comparing and competing, and we do not see the destruction it causes. The guiding force of individuality will be reminding us that everything and everyone in creation is totally individual and unique and that there is no need to compete and compare. Situations, people and things may look alike, but they are not identically the same. Not only is everything and everyone unique, but also everything has an individual adventure. We know about this force very well, as there are no two human beings, no two creatures or things created the same, although our essence is the same. We are all identical as souls, but on the material planes, everybody and everything is totally individual and unique and has a total individual adventure. People may look alike, but even identical twins are not the same, because on the level of the DNA, our structural idea and our, of our chromosomes and the fingerprints, everybody is different, and especially how we think. In nature, and in regards to bacteria and viruses, and even two the same looking bottles coming from an assembly line, they are not completely the same. We may have to go and find out on a molecule level and detecting differences under a microscope. There are always differences and possibly not to be detected by the human eye. It is for this reason that we cannot compare each other nor medically treat two people the same. It is for this reason that we have lots of difficulties 
connected to school and medical systems that approach us as cattle, so to speak. Maybe we try to hide, hide behind the norm or try to fit in somewhere so we feel secure and accepted. Maybe it is in regards to the lust of our inner connection with the Creator that we feel lonely and want to be part of a group. We are not from here, but we want to feel at home. It will not work because we are sold spiritual beings on an adventure in the material world. We try to communicate with each other seemingly under a group name, philosophy or even religion. There will be conflict as every individual has here his or hers individual background and nobody has exactly the same background. We go further by comparing ourselves with who we were in the past. Looking back in the past moments of our life, we realize that we can never get them back for life is an ongoing changing adventure. There cannot be two moments or experiences exactly the same. They may feel the same, but they are not. There may be similar similarities and that's it. Oftentimes we say, I did it again, but it is never precisely the same. We sometimes wish that these repeats do not return, but they are just for us to see how we are changing. We may have been angry at certain behaviors or situations for a long period of time in the past, but 30 years later, we are responding hopefully differently and even sooner. These situations and behaviors are our road signs in our life, consciously letting us know where we are in regards to our personal growth. It takes great strength to do things differently because these patterns are so connected to what we think we are. Our entire existence seems to be around comparing and competing. We do not just compare ourselves with others, but seem to love competition. To prove what? We are already different because there are no two people created alike. It is a strange game, which ends up always in destruction. What do we think causes all the stress? Is it not by we, by being in the business of competition? Do we really think that being an athlete is automatically being healthy? Look where we push our body through. We want to prove that we are better or smarter than others and even end up fighting wars. Not to forget, we are constantly comparing our experiences and feelings and tastes, what we read, hear and see, and by doing so, we lose that special, unique individual experience. Remember that there are no two moments the same. It is probably all connected to that essence which is our soul and the memory of our true home where all of us are one and in a state of peace. So when we are ready to get back to this reality, we must seek the inner path. Imagine, number 33, the guiding force of your imaginary guide. Imagination is more than knowledge. The last member of the Sacred Council, number three, 33, is our or your additional and personal life coach. This could be a guiding force of effort, of friction, and numerology, astrology, an animal, a tarot card, crystals and gemstones, or any other force you feel that is guiding you. It could also be an image of someone you look up to and guides you in one or more aspects of your life, somebody that passed on already or somebody who gives you the guidance while being in the physical body. It could be a parent, a brother, sister or friend. It could be a philosopher, science, a seer, an astrologer, healthcare practitioner, coach, teacher, trainer, you name it. 